I didn't believe in anything of the paranormal, you know. Um, I thought they were just stories that people made up until it happened in front of me and I started seeing like lights flash across the rooms and shadows and entities on the wall and then I believed <laughs> strongly. I met Jackie, she moved in next door to us and she started asking if I could babysit for her kids. And I said yeah, so I used to babysit for her and some of my neighbors behind me started telling me that there was things going on in her house and I said I'm over there all, all the time, there's nothing going on. And then <laughs> things started happening in front of me. So I went over there mostly for support of her because I didn't want her to be by herself. And she wouldn't leave. She wasn't willing to give in to the ghosts. So. I seen a face burned into a, a bedspread while we were sitting in the living room. Um, we used to be walking down the hall and we'd see red slashes go across the wall. And she'd just paint over them like it was going to fix it. So it would start doing it more. And it'd spell Jackie on the wall in red. And she'd just paint over it. And I seen <clears throat> lights going across the kitchen ceiling. I seen um, a skull through a camera lens. When she kept telling me to take pictures and the camera wouldn't work. So I um, pointed out the window where there was nothing that I could capture as far as the ghost was concerned. And I seen a skull through the lens. So I freaked out and dropped it and <laughs> went screaming out. So I'm getting scared again. <laughs> What happened was, um, I was at my house next door, and Jackie was at her house, <clears throat> and I heard her screaming, and by the time I got to my porch, she was almost there, and she was all, Tina, come here, come here. So I went running over there with her, and there was lights going all the, cro all the way across her ceiling, little balls of lights, and she said, take pictures of it. So I kept trying to take pictures of it, and the camera wouldn't work, and <clears throat> so she tried, and it still wouldn't work. So I looked out one window with the camera, and through the viewfinder, I saw a skull, and at the same time that I screamed and dropped the camera and ran out of the house, she screamed behind me. And after we got outside and we calmed down, she had seen the same skull out a separate window than me. And it was, it was weird. It wasn't like just plain bones skull. It just, it was a face so thin that it just looked like, you know, a skull. And I, don't know, I was scared. I was very scared. I've never seen anything like that. And even before, when I was at her house and I'd seen the lights and stuff, I'd never seen an actual face or anything. So it really scared me. And I didn't want to go back in her house again, but I didn't want her to be there by herself. So. <laughs> These balls of light couldn't have been faked. Most of the time that I seen them, Barry and Jeff weren't even there. And I hadn't even seen them when it was just me babysitting the kids. and. I doubt, you know, children can fake balls of light, and there was nobody else in the house. And when it was just me and Jackie there, we'd all, you know, we'd be sitting there watching TV. She wouldn't even move. There couldn't have been nobody hidden somewhere to fake a ball of light or have me fall for it. So they couldn't have been reflections because there wasn't anything around for them to reflect off of. You know, even in a totally darkened room where nothing would have reflected you'd still see balls of light fly by you or go across the ceiling or you'd see one down the hall in the kids room go across the doorway. There was nothing for it to reflect off of. Okay, one night Jeff and Barry came up and we were gonna try a Ouija board se session, try to figure out why the ghost was following Jackie or why it was hanging around at all. And they came up and they set up their camera and we sat down with the Ouija board and some candles. and. Um, at first I had my hands on the pointer also with everyone else and Jackie was writing and then um, the camera went dead so we couldn't get anything off that and the pointer was just flying across around everywhere and the table started shaking and the candles started going out and I got too scared to touch it anymore. I was like no. So I moved back against the wall in a chair writing down whatever they were yelling out the little letters to me. I was writing it down and um, Jeff slumped forward in his chair and he, um, just for a couple seconds, he got back up and he seemed to be okay. And then I think the um, entity or whatever spelled out his name. Then his chair came up off the ground and went flying back against the wall. And I didn't even, like, really bother with what was going on with him. I just got up and ran out of there, screaming. That night, the Ouija board told us that this ghost was murdered. And, and he was 
some kind of a fisherman or something. And it told us something about the baby, that it wanted to protect the baby from Jeff or something. I don't remember if we ever got anything from that, but it definitely did not like Jeff. It made that clear in the Ouija board session. Um, Barry tried to videotape it, but the video cameras would shut down and he didn't have a choice. You know, they'd try to put new batteries or whatever, make sure it was charged. Um, I remember Jeff always making sure the camera was charged before and it still, it would shut down as soon as they started filming. It just, whatever it was, didn't want to be filmed. The only camera that did seem to work was a 35 millimeter that Barry gave me and I tried to take a couple pictures but when it started really, it seemed like it was getting violent with the table shaking and with what it did to Jeff. I couldn't concentrate long enough to take pictures, I was too scared. So I seen, well I felt that night the room get cold and I seen the table shaking and at times it would shake very violently and the candles would flicker on and off and it was just strange and I seen that pointer on the board moving around and everybody could barely keep their fingers on it let alone move it themselves. No, I don't feel that it could have been faked, especially the table shaking, because after I got scared of, um, when the pointer started moving around, so theoretically I moved backwards, and I could see, I had a clear view from where I was sitting of underneath the table, and nobody was moving their knees or anything. I think everyone was too intent with what was going on top of the table to even worry about trying to fake anything underneath. I was scared. My first hope was that it was fake, <laughs> so that, you know, it's scary to think that something with that much power that you can't control or fight back at is out there. So I think I was kind of hope, hoping to see some signs that it was fake. That's why I took special interest in every, where everybody's legs were and stuff, but it wasn't faked. And once um, I seen Jeff lifted up and thrown back, there was no way that anybody could have faked that. Even he himself couldn't have thrown himself back with that much force. Group asked the Ouija board, um, who do you hate? And it spelled out Jeff very quickly, and it, his chair levitated off the ground and he went flying back against the wall in a matter of seconds. It was so fast, and he went flying back so hard. I mean, I couldn't even imagine somebody doing that themselves, or not that strongly. <laughs> when Jeff flew back against the wall, it wasn't a stumble. His chair came up off the ground and went straight back. It didn't tilt back or like you would if you were doing it yourself. It came up and flew backwards, straight backwards like something picked him up and pushed him. You know, strong and was showing his hate. Well, I thought that it was going to attack one of us next. So I screamed <laughs> and I went running out as fast as I could. And I got halfway to my house and I stopped and waited to see if the rest of them were going to come with me because I know they didn't want to be in there either and there was kids in there too and I was worried about it attacking them as well. and I was worried about Jeff <laughs> I didn't know you know if he was even conscious after how hard he got thrown back when I saw Jeff get thrown against that wall it was the most frightening experience of my life when, before when I had seen the lights and you know objects getting thrown or whatever, I thought it was more teasing, but when I seen him get thrown, I felt the evil, and I got scared, and I screamed, and I ran out of there. I didn't want it to attack me. I, I think all of us thought that we seen a man get murdered by a ghost, and I took off running and screaming, and Jackie went to get her kids out of the house, and Barry went and picked up Jeff, and one of them grabbed the camera. We all went over to my house. And all the way there, Jeff was acting like he was possessed. He was scaring me. He kept saying that we had to get back to the board. And when we got up on my porch, as soon as we stepped on my porch, the camera came back on. Like nothing was ever wrong with it. Nobody even touched it. They just carried it up to the porch and it came back on. That was scary. And I was not gonna go back in that house that night. I kept Jackie's kids with me at my house. As I was running out of the house, I just wanted to get out of there, get away from it. You know, I doubt that I could have outran it, but 
I was going to try. And when I got, you know, halfway home and I calmed down a little, I started worrying about everybody else and where they were, you know, at. And then I seen them coming, following me. So it was scary. <laughs> Everything about it. As it turns out, Jeff regained consciousness and he started acting like he was possessed. He he like was walking really slow and shuffling and there's dirt roads so you can really tell. And he just kept saying that we needed to get back to the board. He acted like he was possessed. It was, it was weird. It was scary. I think it wanted to hurt him a lot or scare him to keep him away. It was definitely out to get him. <laughs> I never went back in there that night. I told Jackie she could leave the kids with me and I stayed over there with them and I put my cross necklace on <laughs> and I slept. I tried to sleep. I couldn't sleep well but I was just hoping that it was going to stay over there with Jeff and not come over. Later that night Barry and Jeff and Jackie went back to the house and they continued the Ouija board session and from what I was told it continued um, just spelling out all kinds of things all night long until the sun came up. It said, you know, that when the sun came up, it had to go. When the sun, sun came up, the camera started working fine, and it was gone. <laughs> I think Barry was very frustrated that he couldn't get it on film. You know, the camera equipment works when it's <laughs> really not needed, and then when it's needed to get, you know, really spectacular phenomenon, it doesn't work. <laughs> Jeff and Barry were not faking this in any way. I've seen so m much phenomenon when they're, you know, <laughs> a four hour drive away that there's no way they could be faking it or setting up any kind of hoax. The things were too astonishing for anybody to fake. I mean, if you're walking down a hall and you see a red slash come up beside you, how is somebody going to fake that <laughs> without you seeing them? It, it would be impossible. And Barry did try to document it. Every time the camera would go out, he would try, you know, to get it working. They'd try everything and check everything. They just couldn't get it working until whatever was controlling the camera let go, and then it would work again. When the sun came up the next morning, the cameras worked fine, no problem. Like there had never been anything wrong with it. After I ran out screaming, I ran next door. Barry and Jeff and Jackie came with me and the kids and I told Jackie that I wasn't going to go back in the house. I was too scared, but I would keep the kids with me so they could go back. So they went back over there and I kept the kids with me and I took them in my bedroom and we all laid in my bed and I had um, a cross that it had a small Christ on it that was nailed in with very tiny nails and um, I've always believed in God so I thought if anybody could protect me, that's who could. So right before I went to bed, I laid the cross right on my nightstand. And when I got up in the morning, the cross was laying right beside the, the Jesus had been taken off and laid beside it. So I took that over to um, and showed Barry it. And then when I was showing him, he was busy trying to film something. So I laid it down to show him when he was done. And when I came back, me and my friend Scott, we only found the cross and we couldn't find the Jesus part. And up between the kitchen and the living room in Jackie's room, she had some like raw iron little railing and it was up there hanging and I didn't even see it. I, I thought maybe it got knocked on the floor or something. Scott was the one that noticed that that's where it was and it just, it really scared me. I was like, I don't know if it was trying to just show me that, you know, if it wanted to hurt me or whatever, nothing's going to save me, but it scared me <laughs> a lot. One day before Jeff and Barry came up, me and Jackie, it was at night, we were sitting in the living room watching TV, and the kids were asleep in the very back bedroom, and um, we kept thinking we smelled something burning, and all that night the ghost had been riding on the walls, and Jackie had been covering 